Welcome to Old and New, our new show about aging gracefully. We're all getting older. You may be young and watching your parents getting older. You may be an older person thinking, what am I going to do the rest of my life with the many years you may have as we learn more and more about how long-lived this generation will be. The show will give you some facts to make you think and make you plan. And we hope to give you guidance about what you're going to be doing in life, let's just say after 65. I'm not sure I love the word retirement. Tonight, we're going to walk, walk you through the idea of seniors and work and what kind of work you might be doing now and what you'll be doing in 10 or 20 years from now. Let me make some introductions. First, I'll introduce myself. I'm Hallie Suit Tucker. I've been a writer for many years, an entrepreneur. I've been a CEO of a startup. I most recently was the Boston Globe reporter at Beta Boston talking about technology. And I've got some more smarts here with me tonight. I've got Adam Sand with us tonight. Hi, Adam. Hey, it's great to be here. Um, and Adam is a marketing and communications consultant based in Arlington, Massachusetts, conveniently, as we're here at Arlington Community Media. And I'm going to give him some facts that I learned I was kind of surprised about. We'll talk about that. I'm ready for some facts. Uh, I hope you're ready for I'm some right, facts I'm because I'm giving them to you. Okay. All right, so here's something. You know, many people say, I want to keep working after I'm 65, or, or my idea of retirement is to keep working. But here's some, uh, just some percentages. In fact, 73% of employed Americans, they plan to work after 65, according to J.P. Morgan. Here's the reality. Of that 73 expecting to work, basically 27%. That's a big discrepancy. It's a big difference. That's actually, a big discrepancy. it's actually now people over 65, 27% are able to work. So I've got news and details on why so many people are not able to work after 65. Yeah, there's, there's a disconnect, and I, I'd like to hear more. You want the good news or the bad news? I want, I'm, I'm a positive person in general. Okay. I'd like the good news. And the good news is good news for Boston and the startup scene because 31% of these people actually <coughs> are able to retire early. So there's a big group of people that will just be able to, what we call phone in sick, no, phone in rich, and <laughs> say, yeah. I'm not coming back to work and that's not going to be a big part of my life. Okay. They may reconsider because work is a very healthy thing and, and for people over 65. The bad news? Well, I'll make it sound good. Yeah, please. <laughs> no. The reason so many people, only 27% can go back to work is 60% of that group over 65 um, simply have health problems or disability issues. They can't keep working. Yeah, and they find out pretty quickly. Yeah. They're done. They're or can't go into work. 27% have, in this study, they called it workplace issues. That meant there was downsizing at their company or the company was bought and they were redundant. 10% of these people who can't keep working are supposedly having outdated skills. Now we hang out with a big bunch of people. What are you, what's your kind of person your age that how good are they at technology or social media for instance? They're pretty good yeah. and I think they realize that they have to stay on top of what's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean some of the things that sort of come to mind is if you're in a workplace you're engaging with other people in the workplace very so healthy. you better figure out what is the best form of communication to deal with different people at different age groups. Uh, exactly. Just kind of staying connected, it means different things than face-to-face. Uh, -face. There's other ways of engaging with people that would seem to say technology might be one of them. I think it's a big one, and I think uh, it's easy to feel like you're always falling behind a little. You, if you have kids, you feel like they're so brilliant and using tech better, but not necessarily. Many right. seniors are very skilled. So let me ask you, you have the perfect retirement. What What are the pieces? I think it's I'm, the I'm on a beach. I'm on a beach with <laughs> a book, a maybe okay. a hammock. Okay. Ideally, I'm in an environment where I'm continuing to learn, continuing to enjoy culture, right. um, 
continuing to stay with friends who I've known throughout the years. So work fits in somewhere there, I think. But I think it's, it's, it's sort of picking and choosing uh, what I enjoy doing with people I enjoy doing it with and um, keeping it in balance. Yeah. I mean, the older you get, I just don't, what's the famous expression like, oh, I'm on my deathbed and, and I, I, I wish I'd I, spent more I time wish. at work. Right. Yeah, oh gosh. Wow. That's true. On the other hand, to do things that, I think it's really tricky. If you have been out interviewing for jobs lately, you see, first of all, there's a lot of problems with any sending into any site. I, they do screen. They may just look at the year you graduated and you're out. You know, there's a lot of screening. The, the machines are... Yeah, are, uh... so I, my, my general sense is do not try to find a job online that you actually submit your resume online. Do find and see who's hiring. Use that online, but definitely go and try and figure out who knows who in my network, who's hiring, who's the person, and go see them in person, I think. Cause and, and you'd apply this to the 50 pluses? Is that where everybody, you're going with this? Uh, everybody. Okay. Well, I okay. That's what I was going to say. Everybody. It seems like kind of... Everybody. Yeah. Because I know, I mean, you might have seen lately, I think uh, a friend of ours in social media was showing us, um, this is Tara Hunt. She got a job a few years ago where she knew someone and she had sent in her resume and got no response and it went nowhere and then because the person she knew she got hired in there she met the head sure. of HR and said you know I did send my resume what happened the ladies the HR ladies like I never saw it yeah the, and so the, the really, resume the resume yeah. seems like a leave behind to me it ideally is it's not and it's not what you're leading with it's it's not only the case that the people that you know are going to make you healthier to have a network of people as an old person, as a senior, or even as a young person, but they will also be a very good network to find work. So this is a positive, you're saying, the older, the larger, what was that machine that the the, the, the old people used to see? Rolodex? <laughs> well, that thing? Yeah, so that your thing. Rolodex, your electronic Rolodex yeah. is wider, your LinkedIn you do, connections, yeah. Yeah. And the, you, the you history know, of coworkers, clients, etc. I, re be tapped. I recently hurt my knee. I broke my kneecap, and so I was out out for a while, right? And in fact, coming back, part of the thing my doctor's like, go to church, go to temple, go wherever, do get, join groups, stay engaged, do, really engage. Yeah. So that's going to make you healthier, but it's also going to help you be up to date on what apps right. people are using. It's going to help you work. So, so is, is there an, a, you know, is there an overall mindset that you think we should be framed with here? No. <laughs> yes, in fact, what I'm going to tell you is I'm going back. I want to hear your retirement. This show is about helping you yeah. get ready for what you think is ideal. I hate beaches. I would not be on the beach. I, I was joking about the well, beach, too. Well, no, yeah. I'm giving you... I'd rather be in museums, traveling around the world. Well, travel. Yeah. Very good, right? Yeah. Think about when we travel, to my mind, the most expensive part is where you stay. You can get a ticket pretty cheap to get somewhere, right. but that's the hotel and eating that costs. So you can really use that network of people. Well, We've I, known how many bloggers do you know in Europe? And no, I, I have a travel place. network. That's a very I'm taking good a trip next travel. week. Right. No hotels on right. the whole route, the whole eastern seaboard. Um, and again, this is good advice for people that are aging, but guess what? The people who are not aging need to travel like that and save their money for when they're old. I'll tell you one thing I read in that set of data that was surprising is of the costs that you can contain when you're older, one of the highest costs that is very hard to contain, healthcare. Oh, the worst. And of course we know, go ahead, what well, were you going to say? There's just, when, when something has more demand, the price usually goes up. And um, obviously we're sort of facing that um, yeah. in our current medical. Definitely. Uh, Spending patterns, yeah. And it's going to be probably one of the most important ways. I'm putting you back on the beach. I've got a third of your life's on the beach, but you are now doing yoga on the beach, and you're doing running, and you're doing water aerobics. I'm, I'm putting you to work, because when you're on the beach or anywhere, I'm going to give you your other two-thirds, Right. you have to be healthy. Health, the costs of health I got, yeah. are as a, really, as a preventive right, going to be yep. the thing that kills the game yep. as you get older. Okay. And Future show, I'm guessing. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, and good. the other two-thirds of your life, you're going to do the fun travel things. 
but not if your knees hurt and you can't sit in a plane. Oh. So the health underneath it all is very important. Yep. It's going to let you work and make more money and not get Social Security early. You want to try and push that off. You know what? We didn't, we didn't really cover what kind of work are we doing as we get older. Because it's not the exact job that you did when you were younger, no, right? No, well, that's the other thing. You get to pick. When I had my son go off to college two years ago, I did a Kickstarter program to fund writing a book because I decided I want to be writing books more. I want to do a lot of other things that I hadn't had the time to do. But you had an entrepreneurial spirit. Well, yeah, but it doesn't take that much. It just takes thinking, okay, I have a new mode now. How? What's going to be the most fun and profitable, hopefully? Right. What can I build now that works for me? And especially for women, if you're a mom, you're thinking a lot about your kids all the time, all the time, and then you suddenly are, wow, they're not going to be here. What What do I want right. besides making you know, bologna sandwiches at 6 a.m.? Is there a general sort of... It worked for you, looking at a book, looking at starting your own company. Is there sort of a, a realistic approach that people should be thinking about when they want to make that transition and stay in the workforce? Yeah. I would think, since so much of our work now is freelance nation, that's going to continue, right? We're not talking about being wedded right. to a company at age 60 no, and you know, age 55. Anybody waiting for a gold watch. Right, right. When you think about seniors in work, and I want you to think personally about what is going to be fun for me. Because I know it's a big secret, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to die. <laughs> okay? So make it fun between um, now and then. That's my first thing. But yeah. really, make it work for you. I think you cannot know enough skills. I think a lot of skills, a lot of people, and just some imagination mixed in is going to help like you that. think about. And a lot of people, you think, why is he doing that? Or... What's she up to? Or she's never going to become a, you know, you know, whatever, a painter. Well, thank you, Grandma Moses at 80 became a painter. So don't listen to what people have to say. This is like the good part of hearing aids or pretending you can't turn hear down the, he the hearing turn aid. Turn that down. Don't let uh, them tell you what uh. to do. And think about, I'm making this for me. we got to stop for a minute, and I'm going to have a guest come in. And that would be Robert Collins. I know you know him. I'm a big Very fan of, brilliant big guy. Big fan of Robert. Big fan. And we're going to pause a minute and we're going to go into talking with our, our guest who's coming in by Skype. This was great. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, we're back with Old and New. And I have a really big talent right here with me. I have the pleasure of uh, bringing into the show today Robert Collins from Race Point, and I'm going to ask him just some things around this subject we've been talking about, seniors and work. You ready to go? Ali, great, great to be here and good to see you today. I, I want to start with the idea, I know you have a wide range of experience. Do you think, can you tell me a bit about seniors and work and what types of work might be particularly good for them? I think the most important thing for seniors and almost anyone is anything that they actually care about. Um, I think the more in life you have in time and experiences a variety of different types of works and experiences, the more you should try to continue to fine tune yourself to finding those things that you care about and that give you some a sense of purpose and that you can actually give back to. I think so. Bottom line, what type of work should seniors be looking after? Things they're good at and things they care about, and sometimes just not in that order either. That's great. You're saying just what I love to hear. <laughs> so can I ask you, did your parents, what their experience of retirement was, do you recall? And do you think it's going to be the way you think about retirement? Well, it's interesting because when you when you think about retirement per se, there's this perception of retirement. There's a golden uh, nest egg. There is this this goal at the end of it from a, right. a from a financial tunnel and a work engagement tunnel. Um, my parents are still actively working. My parents are still in some form or another. They're participating. I have a father down in Florida who's doing some fantastic work still. Uh, helping restore airplanes and old cars because it's a passion of his. And I have my mother who's down at the Cape and she's doing just you know fantastic work within the community down there where she can find support. Things that give her back a sense of purpose and more importantly, a sense of belonging within the community. So many of those can be served with the same profession that people had, uh, but sometimes you can take those core skill sets that you had. Um, 
uh, very say almost every parent in the in the world, if has a, a couple children, is a logistics manager. So I mean, you could take those type of skill sets and just apply them across the board. Um, I don't think people need to be thinking of themselves as you know always falling within the same profession. You can take your core skill sets and apply them to anything you kind of you care about. I think that's great. Uh, very good advice. And I guess when you see in a workplace, you're busy in the workplace all the time, what skills are most useful for anybody, but especially seniors, to stay competitive? I think the most important thing for anybody, and but even particularly seniors, um, and I would almost equate uh, people going into college and coming out of college uh, in the same boat as seniors. I think they all need to be entrepreneurs in their own life. And that sounds like a catchphrase or something of that nature, but there's a couple of core, core aspects of a, of a strong entrepreneur. They're passionate about what they do. Um, they kind of go out and pave their own way with regards to how they want to design their world around them and the interests they want to do. And more importantly, they get involved. They actually start to, um, if they want to be involved in a particular career, they actually start to actually do some of the work independent of being paid for it. They start to actually become, uh, this is a, a in the day and age of bloggers um, and, uh, and complete access to almost any technology you can to kind of give yourself a voice and, uh, and, a, uh, and a platform. Yes. Um, you can actually share just about anything that you have a strong opinion on. You can actually start to kind of create content, create community, uh, create value. Um, you don't go in and say, I would like this job because I think I could be good at it. What you do is, I want to create this job, and here's how I'm already doing amazing things in this area, being involved in your community, being involved in a, um, in a school system, uh, being involved at a, at, a, you know, at a company as well, just taking on side projects and say, I see a problem here. I see a need here. I'm going to get some people around me, and I'm going to drive this forward initiative so it can have an impact. And that doesn't happen by someone saying, ooh, I just saw your your resume, or I was right. just pointing to you by five other people. It involves about you actually being impactful in your own life and designing it their own way. The same as it goes for seniors, as it goes for people coming right out of school trying to create their own, their own start their own career. Sounds exactly on the money. Thank you. Um, I wish we could talk more. I could spend hours talking to you, but we're going to probably just close out and. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about what we're going to do in the next segment next time on the show, which is talking about telemedicine. People have heard it called many things. Some people call it telemedicine. I've seen it called telecare. And I remember thinking when I wanted to do this show, I want to be sure to talk about the future of medicine, where we might be, just like you on Skype, being able to be right here with me today. We might be seeing our doctors on Skype. We might be. Uh, involved with medicine in ways where we get coaching for health and all of that would come through the computer um, and yeah. I thought that's going to be way ahead in the future right but no, I, I, I think one of the most important things about technology is and for seniors it can be considered actually a hurdle to a certain degree a lot of people who don't like to log on to their email or log on and, and be involved on any of the social networks the most important thing that you can do with technology is just simplify 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 yes. of, of and and any ways that you can actually make it easier for them to kind of communicate uh, easier the better. Um, I just remember a lot of times you say, you know, you need to go through these technical processes and set up these things in order to kind of make this happen. And I think we just need, there's a lot of great innovation, particularly with the seniors, uh, to be able to just kind of say, have instantly something set up, push just, of a button, works at the drop of a dime, right. and that's all and they have to do. It, it needs to be kind of the iPad, uh, you know, generation. Right. It just simply has to work and be less complex. So I have to tell you what came in my mail today, um, a thing about telehealth today that exists now. And we're going to have that on the next show. And perhaps we can get another chance to bring you in and talk about it. We've got to end right now. I'm getting the signal. We're done today with old and new. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you to Adam. And uh, we'll see you all later. I've had a few days to look at my interviews with Robert Collins and Adam Zand, and I have about three takeaways from their conversations with me, and they're great. And when we talk about seniors and work, I would say these three things matter. Take control of your uh, retirement work and mix it up with creative projects that you love, that you're passionate about, together with 
some new skills, new things you've never done. My number two, stay connected with your friends, with technology, with the network of people you've worked with before, and really connect with others and new people. Keep doing that. And number three is keep working and work at projects that perhaps are brand new to you and passions that are brand new. But keep working is one of the most healthy things you can do. And keep watching our show.